All right. Welcome everybody uh, to this information session, session about uh, studying under the Northern Lights at Umeå University in Sweden. My name is Helena. I work at the international office at Umeå University. And with me, I have two colleagues, uh, Emma and Andrew. Uh, and they will speak uh, later on during this presentation as well. Uh, in the picture, you can see our uh, social sciences building and the um, university library and also the, the little pond that we have on campus uh, where we get ice during the winter, of course, and where you can go ice skating uh, if you feel like it during the winter. Uh, so where is Ume University then? Uh, we're in the northern part uh, of Sweden. It takes about an hour uh, to fly from Stockholm to Umeå. The university was founded in 1965. Uh, so we just, we're celebrating 55 years this year, no? Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, we have almost uh, 35,000 students. Um, we're a comprehensive university. So we have um, all the faculties, uh, Faculty of Arts, Medicine, Social Sciences, and Science and Technology. Uh, we also have a uh, School of Education. Um, that's not a faculty, but looked upon as a faculty. We also have the Umeå Institute of Design, uh, which is a design school uh, that is very popular and one amongst uh, the best design schools in the world. Uh, it has gotten a really nice ranking. I think it was actually number one uh, these past two years in the red dot uh, ranking. So we're really proud of that. Uh, we also have uh, world-class research in, for example, and now I have to look here, global health uh, and aging, uh, and also in plant and forest biotechnology. And as of Wednesday last week, we are proud to say that we also have a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Professor Emmanuel Charpentier won uh, with a colleague from UC Berkeley, uh, Jennifer Dudna, I think her name was, or is. Uh, one, uh, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry uh, last week, and we are really proud uh, of that. Uh, they got uh, the Nobel Prize uh, because of the work with the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, project, which is a gene editing technology that they have developed. And uh, Professor Charpentier developed this uh, while working at Umeå University. So we, really, we are really proud to, to have a Nobel Prize winner at the university. Um, yes, so what are we? We are an international university. Uh, we have over 60 nationalities uh, represented at the university uh, amongst um, students and staff. Every year, uh, or we should say every non-COVID-19 uh, year, uh, we host around a thousand exchange students uh, on campus. Uh, and we are highly ranked in international student satisfaction. So we uh, usually rank really high uh, in a survey called the International, uh, no, what is it called? International Student Barometer, it's called, uh, where we get really high, really high ranked uh, in student satisfaction. And that is uh, because of our body program that we will talk about later as well. Uh, Swedes are also top ranked as non-native English speakers. And since we have an American with us today, uh, I don't know, Andrew, if you, you want to comment on this? Uh, yeah, yeah, I sure can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, it, that's, that's a really serious statement. Swedes are too, too good at English, I would say. You know, you, you want a little bit of a feeling of being abroad, right? I mean, I'm kidding. It's, it's fantastic. And like, I mean, it's made my time here so much easier, especially uh, my first few years when I, I couldn't speak any Swedish. I mean, there is no hindrance by language. Um, it's the first time I've been in another in a foreign country 
where you know they don't have English as their native tongue that I've been able to accomplish and go anywhere that I want to. And I think it's really fantastic. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Our campus, it's actually, uh, it's actually built after the American campus model with uh, everything uh, collected at, at one place. Uh, not entirely true though, since we have our main campus and then we have um, an arts campus uh, by the river, uh, about, I don't know, 10 minutes away from, from the main campus uh, where we host the Institute of Design, uh, School of Architecture and the School of Fine Arts. Uh, and just uh, close to the main campus, we also have the University Hospital, uh, where the medical students spend a lot of time. Uh, our main campus is the size of 34 football pitches. Uh, and it's also really close to the city center. It takes about 10 minutes uh, by bike to go there. Uh, we have two on-campus uh, libraries. And as of this fall, we actually also have a an outdoor gym uh, that anyone can can use. Uh, it was just uh, it was just it opened only a few weeks ago, I, I believe, and it said it said that it we will be able to use it um, all year round. So we'll see how many actually show up there in the winter. But I'm I'm guessing some some will. Uh, what can you study at Umi University? Uh, we have uh, around 250 courses uh, taught in English that we offer to our exchange students. Um, and these courses are within all of the fields, I would say. Uh, if you want to know exactly uh, what kind of courses we offer, uh, we would advise you to go to our website. And I think we have a link at the end of this presentation that you can uh, use uh, to have a look at our courses. And if there's something you are wondering about or need advice on, uh, just email us and we will try to help you. And the email address will also be uh, available at the end of the presentation. Uh, we have experienced and engaged uh, teaching staff. And what many international students also say uh, after being uh, in Umeå for a while uh, is that they uh, really like the re relaxed relationship between students and staff, uh, which I think is also kind of unique uh, for Umeå. It's easy to, to get a hold of professors and teachers. Uh, uh, all the corridors uh, where the staff is located are open, so you can just walk in uh, and knock on the professor's door if there's something you need to ask, uh, which I think is a, a difference from, from many other countries and universities. And accommodation. We do offer uh, international students accommodation through our international housing office. Uh, we do not have any on-campus housing. Uh, so all our housing is off-campus, but still it's not that far away. Uh, it takes around, around uh, five to 10 minutes uh, by bike uh, between the accommodation areas and the university. Uh, the rooms are single occupancy uh, rooms and uh, in student corridors. So you will have your own room, uh, most likely your own bathroom as well. And then you share a kitchen and common area with, I don't know, seven or eight other students. And not just international students either. Uh, Swedish students also live uh, in these student corridors. Uh, the rooms are furnished and internet is included in the rent. Yes, the buddy program, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we have a buddy program uh, that we offer to all our international students. Uh, we actually have a person hired each uh, academic year to work uh, with the buddy program and to form buddy groups of international students and Swedish students, and also to organize different kinds of activities. Um, and Andrew uh, was the buddy coordinator uh, last year. Uh, I don't know if you want to say something short about the buddy program. Uh, <laughs> you. Uh, I, before, Coming to Umeå, I had uh, studied abroad two different times. 
And, you know, upon arrival, I really kind of had, had this expectation that it's like, oh, it's another one of these, I don't know, you know, programs where you're matched with another student and then, you know, you meet a few times and that's it. Um, I was so blown away because it's a totally different format where, you know, you're paired not just with one other person, you're paired with a group of internationals. And then you also have this group of Swedish students who are there to kind of take care of you and show you the ropes of how to get how to get by in Sweden. And uh, you know, I not only have I made some some lifelong friends through the program, I mean it was just really, really fun. And you know, they have this great format where you do at least one activity together a week. And I think that's that's so important to you know kind of forming this group atmosphere. And I want to say the best part about it too is like you arrive in, in Umeo and pretty much the next day you already have a group of friends. I, I really am a huge fan of the buddy program. Thank you. Yes, and, and uh, this fall semester is, uh, we have some new challenges in the buddy program um, as we try to uh, arrange uh, online activities as well uh, or outdoor activities. So I know actually yesterday they were hiking and they are going hiking with another group again tomorrow. So. Uh, trying to figure out some kind of new ways to to interact uh, didn't, dur during COVID-19 times. Didn't they go whitewater rafting? Yes, they did earlier this semester as well. Yes. That looks so cool. <laughs> Sorry, yes. but that looks really exciting. <laughs> yes, I think I think I heard from Emma, our uh, not, not, not this colleague Emma that's in this presentation, but our buddy coordinator Emma this year, that it was really uh, popular and the students who were able to sign up were really happy that they took part in that, so. Okay, let's see what's next. Yes, uh, kind of on campus or not really on campus, but really, really close uh, to campus, we have uh, one of Europe's largest training facilities um, called ICSU. And this is a sports uh, facility where you can do uh, literally anything sports related, I would say. Uh, there are uh, courts where you can play go uh, ball games, you can go climbing, uh, there, there's group fitness, uh, you can play racket sports and swimming, and actually also play uh, beach volleyball. And as you can see in the picture, uh, we have some people here uh, playing beach volleyball, but what you don't see is that this is actually taking place indoors at Ixu. They have, I believe it is four indoor uh, beach volleyball courts. So if the winter gets too much, you can go inside and, and play some beach volleyball, even though it's snowing outside. Uh, let's see. So now it's my turn. Of course, yeah. it stops working. <laughs> uh, so hello, my name is Emma Akkers. So I also work at the international office at Umeå University, but with uh, student mobility. So if you write us an email, I might be the person who is answering. Um, I will talk to you about, uh, more about uh, the city of Umeå, which we like to call the capital of northern Sweden and it's one of the largest cities in the region and um, it's it's a big small town it's a good expression for it um, it's uh, it's uh, roughly 130 inhabitants i think we got the news last week that we passed 130 and it's one of the fastest growing countries in sweden actually and with a very low average age of 39 years and this is largely uh, thanks to the university and all the students, but also the students who uh, finished, all the graduates who stay in Umeå after they finish. And it really does have everything uh, from a shopping mall to uh, very nice uh, shopping centers in the, in the center, uh, unique local shops, uh, a wider range of different foods from all over the world. I'm sure you can uh, agree, Andrew. Uh, you can find almost anything and uh, don't miss also we have something very typical Swedish a fika so it's something like uh, coffee with some something sweet or it can even be like 
some open up sandwich on the side, which I think most of the students who come here, they always mention the Fika, don't miss the Fika. And this is lots of great cafes at the center for having this. And also, of course, student city, lots of clubs and pubs for dancing and meeting new friends. Uh, it's really a city with a the big, big city vibe on a very uh, concentrated area and very close to the campus. Um, Umeå also was uh, elected or ranked the number one city of sports for both 2018 and again uh, this year, 2020. Uh, it, uh, we mentioned Iksu, but we also have a lot of local teams, ice hockey teams. Um, the Björklöven almost got into the <clears throat> Swedish National Hockey League, but because of Corona, we couldn't make it this year, looking at next year and hoping. Um, we have soccer, floorball, we have some of the best teams in Sweden and on uh, several levels. And also, of course, what Umeå is most known for is Brennball. And I don't know, Andrew, how would you explain Brennball? This is what we're seeing on this uh, photo here. Yeah, uh, I think you said the other day a, a really great description. It's kind of a more casual version of softball. Uh, with the main difference being that you you throw the ball up to yourself and you hit it, uh, but also everyone gets a turn, which is really fun. And I would really emphasize that there's not a there's not a big emphasis on how good you are. It's really how much fun are you having in the group, and I I think that's really nice about Brennball. Yeah, and we have the Brennballs Festival and the one of the biggest uh, festivals in Sweden actually, um, where teams are competing. Uh, one of the competitions is best costume, another is best team for playing, but uh, a lot of focus on having fun and, and uh, very big artists coming to play for the festival later that evening. So this is something I know everyone is looking forward to all year. So we hope uh, next year uh, or the year after, this is usually in the spring, we will be able to uh, join it again, visit it again. Uh, also, what is great about Umeå, it's so close to nature. Uh, you have outdoor activities all year round. I know Andrew mentioned this hiking that the buddy program are doing, uh, or skiing. We have a, a tiny little ski slope at the center of the city um, and uh, where you can also go sledding. You can go cycling uh, in the city or canoeing or fishing or just go for a walk in the forest because it will be on your uh, front door so close and also of course uh, opportunities to see the northern lights which i think a lot of the students are joining our northern light hunters uh, facebook group and um, this is uh, something very amazing to see especially if, if you've never seen it before and I think one of the best things about Umeå, because it's a student city, it is built uh, to, it's so easy to get in, out and around without a car. Uh, and uh, because it's a student city and not a lot of students, it's very rare for them to have a, a car and you don't really need it. You can get a secondhand bike, you can bicycle pretty much everywhere. I mean, you see a hundred miles of paid bicycle paths. Uh, you have bus lines going from the university to the Sintu Center all the time. Uh, we have a local airport where I know some people even take their bike to go uh, because it's so close uh, and just one hour, like Helena mentioned, to go down to Stockholm. And also even high speed trains. So if you don't like to take a, uh, a flight to Stockholm, you can take the train and uh, see some of Sweden's landscape on the way down. It's very comfortable. I think they even have internet on the train now. So that's a great thing about Umeå. And uh, now Andrew will talk to us about being an international student at Umeå University. Yeah. The floor is yours. For sure, thank you so much. Uh, so I can say that I've had a bit of experience as an as a international student at Umeå. Uh, I've been both a master's student and I've actually returned to uh, study a new subject. So I'm an international student again at the university for a second time. And I can say that it's probably the best student life I've experienced out of any school, honestly. I mean, there's just such a, such a community, especially a strong international community at Umeå, 
that I mean, there's just there's always something to do within reach if you if you want to. But I mean, what I also really like about it, uh, as Emma said, is that the the nature is so close that if you ever feel like you know you just want to get away, maybe from the city, uh, go out into the woods. I mean, it takes ten minutes, honestly, depending on where you live. Uh, so it's been just such an incredible experience, um, and especially, I mean, I, you know, you can't forget the. Uh, the advantage of being able to experience another culture as well. You know, I mean, I think something I've really enjoyed about Sweden is that, you know, it's it's familiar in some ways, but it's also quite different. And so you can get here and you can feel kind of at home, but there's still this opportunity to have all of these new experiences. And as Emma named with Fika, Fika is so much fun, um, especially your first few years, you might become a little obsessed with it because, you know, it's great. It's a great way to get to, to know people. Um, so, I mean, all I can really say is that uh, I would really encourage y'all to, to come here and, and give Umira a chance. And if you do, it'll probably be one of the best choices of your life, you know? Uh, so that's all for me. Thank you, Andrew. We made you speak so much during the presentation also. Thank you for sharing. So... Yeah, no um, so we hope to see you in Umeå. Here you have uh, our email address incoming.io at umu.se and our webpage where you can read more about exchange studies. So hope to hear from you and thank you for uh, joining and have a nice day. Bye everyone. Bye.